In this video, we are going to look at vertiports, which are an essential component for enabling urban air mobility. The interesting aspect of this video is that we will explore the innovative ways through which vertiports can address the Achilles heel of the EV toll aircraft, that is, the high power used during takeoff and landing. The regular viewers of this channel would know that we often look back at history for solutions. And here too, we will explore some of the methods conceived in the past to assist takeoff and landing. So without further ado, let's begin. People who have an interest in urban air mobility may have come across images of small footprint vertiports in news articles. A lot of cities are eyeing vertiports as a statement of progress, and sites are being marked in urban centers for possible development. For example, in the city of Coventry in the UK, a vertiport construction is already underway and will be operational by the end of 2021. It will be used initially by delivery drones. The case for vertiports becomes even stronger when you consider the potential traffic. At any given time, there are 10,000 aircraft flying in the US airspace. A total of 1.7 million passengers fly daily in the US. If urban air mobility becomes a reality, it is expected that there could be a thousand passenger flights each day over a single city alone. And it is not just vertiports, but also e-stall ports that will be required. This is because not all electric aircraft will have the capability of landing and taking off vertically. It should be noted that it is easier to design longer range electric aircraft with stall capability rather than VTOL. Unlike the conventional takeoff aircraft, the short takeoff and landing requirements make the runway footprint much smaller. The landing strip length of only 150 meters is required for most of these aircraft. This makes the stall ports to be ideally placed as a floating platform on the rivers or alongside on river banks within a city. The stall ports are most likely going to be used for carrying cargo from city to city in the near future. Drag chutes and tail hooks can be used for rapid deceleration for landing smaller aircraft. Given that a notable portion of energy in the aircraft mission is spent during the takeoff and landing, let's look at some of the innovative approaches that can help the aircraft consume little to no onboard energy during those phases. The first method we are going to look at is called assisted takeoff. It is a system that allows the aircraft to get airborne without using its own power or only some of its power. Many of you might be familiar with the aero tow and winch methods that are used to launch gliders. There are other methods too which fall under the umbrella of gravity assisted launching. These include the aircraft sliding down large ramps and falling off cliffs or tower, etc. The aim is to quickly build aircraft speed to a level beyond its stall speed and commence flying. And then there are techniques that allow the aircraft to be dropped from a mothership. In the case of launching gliders, hot air balloons and even helicopter drops have been successfully carried out, which is sometimes referred to as bungee launch. In a similar vein, the concept of detachable eVTOL has been advanced by Talon Air. The idea is simple. The vertical takeoff system is only there when needed. The Talon's lift vehicle with its eight large rotor mounted in four coaxial pairs attaches to the top of the cruise vehicle for takeoff. Using its own battery, it lifts the cruise vehicle up and gets it up to a speed where the cruise vehicle's wing and pusher prop takes over. After this, the two aircraft separate and the lift vehicle flies back to the base. This facility of lift vehicle that can attach to different aircraft through a standardized mount can be offered by the vertiport. Yet another method of assisted takeoff is the aircraft catapult. This is commonly used by aircraft carriers to launch fighter jets. The aircraft catapult, however, would not give the best experience for normal passengers as it involves rapid acceleration, which means high G forces. Just to give you an idea, the catapult shot of an F-18 that has a 12 to 4 second duration can reach G force values of 2 to 3 Gs. 
Although the catapult launch can be made to accelerate slowly, it would require a longer launch trip. On an aircraft carrier, steam catapults have been used, but a newer technology is the electromagnetic aircraft launch system. The electromagnetic rails accelerate the aircraft more smoothly, thus putting less stress on the airframe. Another method for which a patent has been filed is called the detachable power tethering system. As the name suggests, it allows the electrical power during takeoff to be supplied by cables. The additional weight of the cables can be taken out by using a pulley system. The pulley system can be mounted on a rail which allows the cable to also move forward with the aircraft as it accelerates. Note that most of the upcoming electric aircraft can hover but have been mainly designed for optimal power utilization during cruise. Such aircraft can benefit from this system as the takeoff energy for them can be as high as 8% of the total energy of their battery pack. And this brings us to our most interesting concept. Many of you may remember the scene from the movie The Dark Knight where Batman captures Lao, the rogue accountant from Hong Kong, and escapes using a skyhook. I'm sure the viewers of this channel would have found the scene immensely gratifying and intellectually stimulating. It is not commonly known, but this is a real system that is used by US Air Force, US Navy, and other agencies for retrieval of personnel without the need of landing an aircraft. It was developed by the inventor Robert Fulton in the 1950s and is also referred to as Fulton Surface to Air Recovery System or STARS for short. The system we are interested in is the complete inverse of this, that is, air to surface aircraft recovery system. Interestingly, there was another concept also termed the Skyhook, which is precisely that. This concept was explored by BAE systems to make the Harrier jets launch and landing easier, safer, and more fuel economical. Following the Falklands War, British Aerospace explored the technique to operate Harriers from smaller ships. Skyhook would have allowed the launching and landing of Harriers from smaller ships by swinging and grabbing the aircraft respectively in midair by a computer controlled crane. The crane could also be used to orient the Harrier jet to maximize the headwind during launch. This would potentially have saved fuel and allowed for operations in rougher seas. Note that it is more difficult for Harriers to land on a stationary ship than to hover alongside it if the ship was moving. This is because the ground effect from the jet downwash in the latter situation does not come into play. The crane was designed to grab onto the Harrier with a four-point contact pad. This system was successfully tested on numerous occasions but was not adopted as the Cold War wound down. Perhaps it is time to look again into this system for urban air mobility to facilitate the new breed of electric aircraft where onboard energy is very limited. Interestingly, delivery drones like Zipline have already been using catapult launch and tail hook systems successfully since 2016. For the new generation of electric aircraft to be effective, it is important that the vertiports not just provide sufficient takeoff and landing space, but also work synergistically with the aircraft for automated landing and reduced energy consumption of the aircraft battery. My own personal idea is that of a tower with a revolving capture cage on one side and a counterweight on the other. Another configuration of this system can be a cage that is mounted on rails which are elevated to a sufficient height from the ground level. The cage could be given some forward speed as the aircraft approaches so as to reduce the relative speed between the cage and the aircraft, making it easier to enter the cage, dock the aircraft and kill power. So it's now my time to ask you of your idea for an ideal vertiport with assisted landing and takeoff. Would you use an aircraft catapult with skyhook crane? or would you use something more novel? Please do share your thoughts in the comment section. And with this, the video is concluded. Hit the like button if you learned something from it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for your attention.